Having been frozen out at Manchester United, where he scored just one Premier League goal in the previous two years, Jesse Lingard has come flying out of the traps on loan at West Ham. Whilst most players would need a few weeks, if not a couple of months, to regain that match sharpness that comes following an extended period of time out in the cold, Lingard looks to have almost immediately returned to his finest 2017-18 vintage, bagging three goals in his first four appearances for the Hammers. That got me thinking about some other players who find themselves watching on from the bench, or failing to even make their team's matchday squads, at this moment in time. To be clear, I'm not talking about players who have been injured for an extended period of time. There'll be no Sergio Aguero or Virgil van Dijk. I'm interested in players who have been fully fit for most of this season, but just haven't played hardly any minutes, for one reason or another. Think Mesut Ozil before his move to Fenerbahce, and you should get a decent idea of the remit for this seven. I also decided not to include more than one player from any one club, since there are a couple of clubs, <coughs> Manchester United and Real Madrid, <coughs> who might have dominated had that rule not been in place. Without further ado then, here are seven of the best footballers who, at this moment in time, don't actually play very often. Javi Martinez we get off to a good solid start in 7th place with a good solid footballer. Whether it be Sergio Busquets, Xavi or Thiago Alcantara, Spain have produced some really beautiful and elegant midfielders over the past 10 to 20 years. And they've also produced Javi Martinez. I jest, but of course, every team needs its distractors, and that is exactly what Martinez has been in the team to do. Except, of course, for the fact that he isn't in any team at all at the moment. In the interest of full disclosure, it's important to state that Martinez has had a couple of setbacks this season. In early December, he missed five games with a hamstring strain, and at the end of the month, he tested positive for COVID-19, ruling him out for a further 10 games, if one includes Bayern's FIFA Club World Cup commitments. It's highly likely that had Martinez not had either of those setbacks, he would have played a few more games this season, but the fact remains that he was playing barely any football at all, even when he was fully fit. He has only played a full 90 minutes once this season in the Bundesliga, and only twice in all competitions. Those two games come against Werder Bremen in the league, and against 5th tier FC Duren in the DFB Pokal. No doubt Martinez would have expected his game time to decline this season, he is a 32 year old at one of the best clubs in the world, where he has never exactly been a star man. However, I doubt he'd expect a drop off of this magnitude. Martinez's current contract is up at the end of the season, and I suspect he'll return to Spain, most likely going back to Athletic Club on a free, where I think he'll still be able to offer an awful lot. Jordan Shakiri. Remember Jordan Shakiri at Stoke? This isn't the start of a Peter K joke, it's a serious question. Sure, he could go missing every now and then, but there were also occasions in which he was completely unplayable. If you caught the Potters on a day in which Shakiri and Arnautovic were both at the races, well then, you might as well get back on the team bus and head home, because it was as good as game over at that stage. It has been a similar story for much of Shakiri's career, and he seems to play his best football when he is the star of the show, rather than a rotation player at a super club. Just look at some of the performances he has produced in the Swiss national team over the years. Even in light of the Reds' recent injury crisis though, Shakiri has yet to play a full 90 minutes in the Premier League this season, and he has done so just once in all competitions against FC Midtjylland in the Champions League. As with Martinez, Shakiri has had an injury this season, a muscle injury which he picked up in November that saw him miss 9 games in all competitions. However, prior to that setback, Shakiri had played just 51 minutes of football 8 games into the league this season and he didn't even make the Liverpool squad for the first five. Age 29, he has to leave Anfield in the summer, and I'm thinking of somewhere like Newcastle, if they stay up, if not, a move to Germany or Italy before a likely return to Basel before he hangs up his boots. Heinier Jesus The youngest player in this seven, Heinier Jesus, is only 19 years old, so you might be thinking, what's the big deal if he isn't getting much game time just yet? Well, I'll try to give you a little bit of context, for those of you who aren't too familiar with his career development to date. Heinia burst onto the scene with Flamengo back in 2019, following some outstanding performances for Brazil's under-17s. The 6 foot one inch number 10 bagged 6 goals in 15 games for the Brazilian Giants, capturing global attention due to his size, vision and flawless technique. He ended up making the biggest move of all to Real Madrid in a deal worth a reported 30 million euros. 
Following two goals in just three games for Amari Castilla, Madrid obviously wanted to give Hania increased game time within the senior game, so they offered him out on loan. Borussia Dortmund came calling, a team with an outstanding record, when it comes to developing young players. So that's where Hania went. However, the young Brazilian is yet to start a single game for Borussia Dortmund this season, and he has played fewer than 150 minutes all season across all competitions. He has had a couple of very minor setbacks, missing games due to COVID and a little muscle tweak, but they have ruled him out for seven or eight games at the absolute maximum. There are reports that both Real Madrid and Hania himself are unhappy with the amount of minutes that he has been afforded, and personally, I think they should send him out on loan to Hull City instead next season. Deli Alley. I could easily have included Gareth Bale for Tottenham, though he's another Real Madrid loanee, so I thought I'd go for Deli Alley instead. Ali's demise is one which has been pretty depressing to watch from afar, from a player who promised so much during his first two seasons in the Premier League. As I mentioned on this channel not long ago, I can remember watching Ali rocket a long-range effort into the top corner against France on his England debut in 2015 as his meteoric rise powered on. It seemed as though the sky was the limit at the time. Ali had a great touch, fantastic forward movement, a telepathic relationship with Harry Kane, and bags of final product. He hit double figures in his debut campaign and followed that up with 22 goals the following season, but it has been steadily downhill for the 24-year-old ever since, culminating in where we are now. Whilst Ali's form has faltered for the last few years, it's only this season that his game time has really fallen off a cliff. One Premier League start in the opening game of the season, in which he was pulled off at half-time, tells you all you need to know. There's obviously still a player in there, and Ali is still very young, but if something doesn't click soon, you feel as though a Lingard parting of player and club may be required, and a fresh start for the former MK Dons man. Donny van der Beek It doesn't matter who you are when you pay £35 million for a player, rising to £40 million subject to add-ons, you expect them to make more than two starts in their first 25 league games at the club. And yet, that is all Donny van der Beek has managed since arriving at Old Trafford. The 23-year-old Dutch international has had his moments in a Manchester United shirt. I thought he impressed in the EFL Cup against Brighton, but by and large, it has been a very underwhelming introduction. Initially, I thought some of the clamouring for van der Beek to start more games was a little hysterical, and thought he could be bedded in at Old Trafford in much the same way that, say, Christian Pulisic was at Chelsea. However, as the season has gone further and further on, it has become cause for concern. Van der Beek has had no known injuries to speak of, other than perhaps this last week, and yet he has played just over 300 minutes of football in the Premier League. It is early days of course, but the problem for Van der Beek seems pretty straightforward. He is competing for a starting berth with by far Manchester United's best player. Consequently, if he wants to get regular game time, I can't really see any alternative to him leaving the club unless he is happy to act as a deputy and rotation option, or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer somehow comes up with a system that can accommodate the pair of them, which seems highly unlikely. Isco If you stop and take a second to reflect on the talent in this seven, and how little football they have played this season, it is quite extraordinary, and there is perhaps no more gifted individual out in the cold in world football right now than Isco. Signed by Real Madrid in 2013, off the back of winning the Golden Boy Award at Malaga, there have been multiple occasions in which the Spaniard has threatened to really blossom and become the world-class playmaker that he is capable of becoming. A few years ago, I still thought that he might do just that, but now, age 28, I think there's just something lacking, whether it is a mentality problem or he just needs a change of scenery. In truth, Isco's form has been declining for the last few years, but following a really underwhelming 2019-20 campaign, this season has been borderline disastrous. He is yet to play a full 90 minutes of football in La Liga, and he's only played 30 minutes of football in the Champions League all season. Isco has only missed two of Real Madrid's games through injury this season, yet he has only played 532 minutes in all competitions, a fifth of which came in just a single Copa del Rey tie against fourth-tier opposition. It makes for pretty miserable reading for one of the most gifted midfielders in Europe, and though I hope I'm wrong, I'm not convinced we'll ever see the Isco of old again, let alone the player that he could have been. Christian Eriksen Maybe, just maybe, Christian Eriksen's fortunes are starting to turn around at Inter Milan, though it would take a brave man to call it at this stage, given the way in which his first year at the San Siro has gone. 
A magnificent footballer who gave six and a half years of stellar service to Tottenham Hotspur, or six years at least, his last six months were a little bit suspect, Ericsson has started off at Inter much as he left off at Spurs. Disappointing. From the word go, he doesn't seem to have clicked under Antonio Conte, who some suggest never wanted to sign the Dane in the first place, but had Ericsson forced upon him since Inter felt the deal was too good to turn down for a player of his calibre. I say Ericsson's fortunes could be turning around because he has played 70 plus minutes in each of Inter's last two league games, and he has added a touch of class to a Nerazzurri side that has now leapfrogged their near neighbours and bitter rivals into top spot in Serie A. Having said that, Ericsson's stats over the course of this season still make for miserable reading. I mean, for a player of his talent not to have scored a single goal or registered a single assist in either Serie A or the Champions League is astounding even though Ericsson has only played a little over 600 minutes of football in those two competitions so far this term. The next few weeks will be crucial to Ericsson's future in Milan, but for now, he remains a perfectly valid candidate for this seven, and I even went so far as to give him top spot. So that is it for today's video, but thank you all as ever for watching. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure to turn on notifications and subscribe to hitc 7s you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you feel so inclined.